What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today we are going to give you our truth and experience the real behind the scenes of visiting the incredible country of Egypt. We promised you we were going to do it and here it is. <laughs> Before we jump into today's video, guys, we need your help. We are getting so close to 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I think we're at 97,000. I can't believe 250. That. So <laughs> we're close enough that it is time for us to ask for your help. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always ask this in our videos because I feel like maybe it gets old, but we are so close that we are asking today. And we forget. Make sure you subscribe to our channel right now. Do not watch any further. Get down there right now and hit subscribe. I know a lot of you who do watch our videos are not subscribed. I don't get it. Make sure you subscribe <laughs> right now. We are so close you guys and how amazing would it be to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And that's coming up quick. I mean we're like in the middle of November here and we have a goal to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year so we just need your help. If you have not subscribed please go do so now and bonus Tell your friends, tell your family, just tell whoever That's to cute. go subscribe to our channel. Help us hit our goal of 100,000 subscribers before January 1st. All right, now that we have gotten that out of the way and all of you watching have gone and subscribed. We are gonna share with you today the truth about our Egypt trip. And the truth is guys, Egypt might not be for everybody. I know maybe our videos make it look absolutely amazing, like it's just the best time in the world, but there's some things that we wanted to point out that I feel like we we wish we had knew better beforehand. All this information is kind of already out there, but we want to reiterate a few things based on our personal experience to give you guys a heads up if you do travel to Egypt. And I know a lot of you have commented that you are going there in a month, that you're going there next May, that you're going there sometime soon. That so, it's always been on your bucket list, you've always wanted to go there. And we decided, yeah, we want to give you guys the truth to us, I will say. But as Daniel said, there is a lot of information out there about Egypt and a lot of videos that or kind of like this about Egypt, but honestly, we didn't watch any of those before we left. We knew nothing. We knew, I think, three days before we flew out to Egypt that we were actually going to Egypt, and now we're here to share what we've learned. <laughs> Before we dig into that, guys, we want to share our last day in Cairo with you. So we're going to jump back before we dig in. Wait, are we on the 24th floor? We're up here, yes. We're on the 24th floor, but in Cairo that really means like the 27th or 26th floor because there's like four floors that I feel like don't count. <laughs> <laughs> Until you get to floor one. Until you get to floor Way one. Way up there already. We woke up to an insane view of the Nile River yeah. and the city of Cairo and boy is it smoggy out there. It totally is. It's a little is. bit hard to see. I'm on my last clean shirt here, but that's okay because- Mine's not clean. Is that a rerun? This is a rerun. Today's our last day of touring around Egypt. I can't and believe we're saying that. It feels I know. like we've been here for a decade. It does feel like we've been here for so long. I have six t-shirts. I don't remember anything before Egypt at this point. <laughs> I have six t-shirts and this is the last one. I've not worn this one yet. I've been saving it for today. Not really, but it is the last clean one. <laughs> We got back into Cairo late last night. We flew from Luxor back to Cairo for our last day of touring here around Cairo. And randomly enough, we're staying in the Sheridan right here on the Nile River. We have the Nile to our left and we have the city of Giza to our right. Pyramids are out there somewhere. Wish we could see them, but there's so much smog. You can't see more than I think a couple miles away, especially on the other bank of the river. Back there is Cairo. You can like barely see across the river. <laughs> I know, it's kind of crazy. Like I can barely see the buildings right across the river. <laughs> The shots are cool though because it's very like, I don't know, mystical, which let's be honest, Egypt is very mystical. Mm -hmm. Mystery we haven't solved yet. We're gonna be touring around Cairo today though. We're gonna be seeing a lot of the cool sights. We probably will not be taking the microphone again today. As we said before, we've had a little bit of trouble in Egypt with the microphone for security reasons. I don't know. And we'll capture all the shots as we go along. So don't you worry about it. You are not gonna miss a thing. I'm sure they're really worried. <laughs> Here's our favorite part about this hotel. <laughs> Do not try this at home, kids. 
Look at that morning fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting sore throats actually. Our 24th floor window opens all the way. And it's pretty amazing, but also probably pretty dangerous. But we're loving it. First stop in Cairo was the Cavern Church. This was actually really amazing. I had no idea we were going to be seeing this on our tour of Cairo today, and it was really awesome to see the history there. But this Christian church dates back about 1,500 years. But what is really amazing about it is that it was built over a cavern where Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus lived while they were in Egypt. When King Herod sent out that decree to have all the young male children killed, Mary and Joseph escaped to Egypt to save Jesus' life. They moved frequently around. Egypt during that time to not get caught, but they did end up spending about three months living in this cavern. They even had the well where the Holy Family would gather their water on display in the church. It's a pretty incredible thing to think about and see in person. Just down the street from the cavern church was the famous Hanging Church. This is one of the oldest churches in Cairo and dates back 1800 years. The walk up to the church is really cool. There's a bunch of very pretty tile murals along the walls, each depicting a different religious scene. They we call this the Hanging Church because it was built on top of an old Roman fortress. You can actually see the remnants of the old fortress from outside, and even from the inside, they left some viewpoints in the floor with some clear glass so you could see the old fortress below. Afterwards, we drove up to the Muhammad Ali Mosque, and no, it was not named after the boxer. This mosque was incredibly impressive. Sitting up on the hilltop, the views of Cairo were amazing. Probably one of our favorite sights from the day. Through the haze, you can even barely make out the pyramids way off in the distance. Going inside the mosque was overwhelming. The ceilings were so high and you can see the main and the half domes. It was incredibly impressive, but also kind of hard to capture on camera. Our last stop was the famous open air bazaar of Khan El Khalili. They literally sell everything here from antiques, custom lamps, jewelry, to cheesy souvenirs and delicious local food. We walked the alleys and the streets for a while and actually made it out of there without buying anything. All right guys, tip number one, first thing that we learned about going to Egypt and just to preface all this, they may not all relate to you. Some may only relate to content creators. Some may relate to just, you know, vacationers, travelers, but take what you can and use it to make your trip go a little bit better. No drones, you guys. Egypt does not like the drones. We did know this one beforehand and we planned ahead and we left our drone here Sorry. in London <laughs> with a friend, which was really good. I'm grateful that we planned ahead because no drones even in the country at all. Guys, it would have been, I think, a nightmare if we actually showed up to the Egypt Cairo airport with a drone. We had enough issues with just our camera gear, period, that having this with us, I think, would have been a major issue. <laughs> And the reason that I think they have such strict laws with the drones, they say it's for security purposes, but I do think there have been assassination attempts and kind of crazy stuff against their political leaders using little drones. So I get that. I see why you want to crack down on these for those reasons. That makes a lot of sense. But this next one, guys, I really don't see a reason for. Second one is the fluffy microphone. <laughs> You guys know we obviously use a microphone because we're making videos. We're talking to our camera. We're telling you about the beautiful things we're seeing. We're trying to anyway. In Egypt, they're just a hassle. The amount of times that we got stopped and told that a microphone was not allowed or got in trouble for just having the microphone, I think having the big fluffy microphone on top of our camera makes it look a lot more like professional, if you will. Having a microphone is just a huge target, we found out. People tried to take the microphone from us, tell us we can't have it and they were going to keep it. We paid to let people let us use it. <laughs> There's not really any hard rule. We did find that if you're willing to just slip a little bit of cash to that particular person's pocket, they will let you do whatever they're telling you that you cannot do. <laughs> we decided after countless failed attempts that we were just going to ditch the microphone, which is why we have done the voiceovers in some of these later videos. Yeah, 
Microphones was a no-no. Don't take microphones. Yeah, it was extremely frustrating because we're obviously trying to make the best videos we can for you guys and you can't have a good video without good audio. Mm -hmm. And so that made it kind of hard in the fact that we're trying to make YouTube videos. So a lot of you may not relate to that one, but this next one you definitely will relate to. This next one, guys, was kind of shocking to me and that was just having a camera. Obviously, if you're going to Egypt, go to Egypt, take your camera. That's the whole point. It's like the motherland of civilization. Everything there you're gonna wanna photograph, you're gonna wanna document is so cool, is so old. Obviously, you have to take a camera. But there were so many times when we would go to a shopping mall or things like that, that they were forcing us to take our batteries out, leave them at desks, all sorts of weird stuff that I wasn't really comfortable with because I wasn't really sure if I was gonna get it back. You never really know. I think that's part of the issue too. And that's not just us saying that. I mean, I mean, we were with local tour guides our entire time in Egypt and that was like coming from their mouth. You don't really know like what you're gonna get back. They advised us not to bring things because they would take them and chances are you would never see it again. We started to travel real light guys. One time we were trying to eat at an IHOP. <laughs> oh we were trying to just kill time before our flight. Our flight was later in the afternoon and we had checked out of our Airbnb early and we just wanted to go grab some food. <sighs> I wanted IHOP, guys. She wanted IHOP. It was we right by, IHOP. yeah, it was right next to where we were staying and we were like, you know what? A stack of pancakes and syrup sound really good right now. We had to go through three different security checkpoints just to get into this IHOP and at the end of the day, we weren't even allowed in. They would not let us in. Well, we left, guys, because I had six batteries on me. She had three or four batteries. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to leave ten batteries in They're hopes really that expensive batteries. I'd get them back after I enjoy my pancakes. So, don't let that keep you from taking your camera to Egypt. Obviously take it, but just be aware. Sometimes you won't be able to bring it or you'll have to leave your battery. Oh well. We would never discourage anybody from taking a camera anywhere because obviously that is what we do. However, I will say this. Being a photographer myself, these new iPhones, they could put us out of business soon, you know? These new iPhones are kind of insane. Baby, that's not a new one. What is this? This is a this, 12. This is a 12. <laughs> no, I'm talking the new 14. Neither of us have it. But the cameras on that thing, they're pretty insane. So if you They're just don't want to deal with it, like if you just are going leisurely on vacation and you just don't want to deal with any hassle, being stopped, having to leave things with people, an iPhone, honestly, I feel like is gonna do the job. I mean, those cameras are pretty awesome. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. It's scary, guys. This is barely better than the iPhone. <laughs> It's Barely. huge. <laughs> I know, what am I doing? Next up, this one I would say goes for everyone. Whether it's a content creator, just a leisure traveler, elderly, younger, whatever. Be prepared to say no. I feel <laughs> like Egypt is a place that you have to have thick skin and you have to be prepared to say no. She couldn't be more right. And guess what? That's incredibly hard for both of us because we both are like people pleasers. We love to talk to people, meet people, say hi. But the second you show any kind of like friendliness towards any of the vendors or anyone, they latch on to you and they will not let you go until you buy something or somehow escape them. It's kind of crazy how relentless the vendors can be anywhere in Egypt. The different tourist attractions are definitely worse. And also I feel like because we had a local Egyptian guide with us the whole time. I have heard that that helps the vendors to kind of leave you alone a little bit, but I will say, even though we had a guide with us the entire time, and that definitely didn't stop them. I mean, we got hounded a lot, and I struggled with it because I am a very, I try to be anyway, a very friendly person. I am like very smiley. I feel like I'm always smiling at people. In fact, we had one guy we met in Prague. I smiled at him, we sat next to him at a table, and he like laughed and he was like, oh, you're American, right? And I'm like, yeah, how did you know? He's like, cause you're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> And I, he's like, you're smiling at strangers. He was from the UK and I didn't know that was an American thing, but apparently it is. But that's me. Like, I just love to smile at people and I learned the hard way many times. You can't do that. And even our guides told us, like, you just, you can't make eye contact. Like, you can't, because the second that you look at them, that is like, they're in. And they'll say anything to get you to kind of look up. I fall for that all the time. Like, people will say something or a noise will happen and I'm like, squirrel. Like, I'm all over the place. And I learned the hard way that you kind
kind of just have to keep your eyes straight, your eyes down, whatever. You can't really make eye contact because if you do, it's going to be a while before you can kind of like get away. Even with like hard no's, I mean they know to keep pushing even after you say no. One thing that I will say I kind of struggled with, and this is maybe just like a little bit of an honest moment, the cute little children, okay? I loved the little children and I always wanted to talk to the little children and I had little candies with us and I would give them out to the kids. I kind of feel like I got burned one night and it really hurt my feelings, I'm not going to lie, because this cute little child, he didn't really speak any English and he was standing there and he was begging and I just gave him some candy because they loved the candy. It would always make their face light up. They, 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 they loved the candy. And then he immediately looked at an adult who was like across the way and the adult kind of got a little bit upset with him and then the little kid instantly said, please money and got really upset and asked me for money and it just broke my heart. It was really sad. It is difficult guys. Obviously if you want to buy something, go buy it, you know, go get it. Make sure you haggle, offer half price, get a good deal on it. But if you're not going to buy something, like Shell said, put your thick skin on, just say no. It's okay if you're not friendly, like that just means I'm not interested. Well, we had also read later once we were there and we had kind of talked to our guide a little bit more and stuff like that. Being friendly, they see it almost as like a sign of weakness. Like if you're friendly, that means you're weak and you're they prey. can get, yeah, that means that they can get you. And so that was one thing I feel like we struggled with because I'm, we're I both didn't. pretty I'm friendly. Not too friendly. No, you're not very nice, but. <laughs> <laughs> but we're friendly people. We smile, we say hi, we want to get to know them, you know, and that's just not the greatest place for that kind of attitude, I will say. And one thing to also be, I would say, a little bit aware of is that oftentimes there are people who will appear or act as though they are like official employees of like the pyramids or some other tourist attraction or even at the airport this happened and they'll come up to you and they'll try and take your bags, they'll try and do something. Anyone who asks to take a photo of you, unless you're willing to pay for it, don't do it. I would just recommend a little bit to have your guard up and just be aware of your surroundings and who is talking to you because more often than not we experienced it wasn't an official employee and it was just somebody who was looking for money so basically have your guard up a little bit and be very aware. I don't really want to say this because it kind of is a very pessimistic outlook on life and people and whatnot but if someone is going to try and do something nice for you that you don't know they probably want something in return. Unfortunately, I hate to say it. Unfortunately that's but... very much the truth we experienced in Egypt, that was very much the case. All right, the next one that I wish we kind of knew more of before we went is the tipping culture in Egypt. It is big, guys. Everyone expects a tip. If they help you in any way, do any little thing for you, even if you don't think it's tip worthy, they may think so, and they may not leave your side until you give them a tip. So, tipping is great. Obviously, a lot of these people, most of their wages come from tips. It's not in their salary or anything like that. So no, your the guys- salaries are really low. Your drivers, anyone that you think deserves a tip, make sure you tip them well. All the workers on the Nile cruise, like our cute little housekeeper guy who made all of our little towel animals. The best. Yeah, they were awesome. Loved them. But then for the people that you don't think deserve the tip, here's my suggestion to you. And whether you do this before you go to Egypt or when you get to Egypt, make sure you get some cash and make sure you break it down into small denominations like the five Egyptian pound notes. That's about a quarter US. Have a ton of those. We had a ton of them. Mm -hmm. We would use those every time we went to the bathroom, there's someone there that's gonna expect it. So make sure you have those. You don't wanna get stuck with hundreds and then have to use the bathroom because you're not oh. always gonna get change. And ladies, carry your own toilet paper. Carry tissues, carry toilet paper, carry something because it's non-existent a lot of times, but if they do have it, they're gonna charge you more for it. So make sure you always carry your own toilet paper. And when they do give it to you, like when they charge you more for it and you get it, it's usually a very, very small amount, like two squares, I'm not joking. And like, I don't know, as a girl, like <laughs> I feel like I need more than two squares, sorry. Two squares of single ply. <laughs> two squares of single ply. Not enough, guys. But that would be my suggestion, is just to have a ton of small bills that you can give away to the people who touch your bags, the people who check you into your room, the people who do whatever for you. Just give them a five, a 10, maybe even a 20 if you have it. It's just, at the end of the day, it's not that much money. It makes a big difference for them, and it's just expected across the country. Very Never much so. have I seen tipping culture like in Egypt. That was next level. I don't think that the 
US tipping culture has anything on the Egyptian tipping culture. I mean, you literally walk into a little convenience store and someone hands you the water bottle from behind the counter that you can't get to and they expect a tip for that. And it's just kind of one of those situations where it's like I'm already paying for that water bottle and you're not physically allowing me to grab it myself. But it's a big thing. You're not paying for the service. So they do expect that tip. So you don't get caught off guard with someone following you around after they've toted your bag or something like that. Just keep those small bills and just hand them out like candy. At the end of the day, it's not that much money, but it definitely will make your trip go a lot smoother. With all of this being said, we have gotten a lot of questions asking us if Egypt is a safe place to travel. And my answer would be yes. I felt safe in Egypt. We were with a guide the whole time. I will say if you go to Egypt, I feel like anything you read, anything you watch about going to Egypt, they're probably gonna tell you the same thing. Get a guide, get a local guide. Not only will it just help make your trip like smoother and help you kind of know where to go and what things are and everything like that, it does kind of add that sense of security a little bit and it does kind of help to have people leave you alone a little bit. So I do think, yes, Egypt is safe, but I absolutely would recommend getting a guide. So at the end of the day, guys, we're not making this video discourage anyone from going to Egypt. We obviously went, we loved it, it was amazing, but we figured from our experience, we could give you a heads up, maybe let you know a few of the things to expect that might catch you off guard if you went not knowing. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Get down in the comments if you have been to Egypt. Let us know if you experienced similar things or if there's other things that you wanna share that people can read down in the comments below to help them have a smoother trip. We would really appreciate that. That's it for us, guys. That's all of our little Little two cents and advice on if you're traveling to Egypt definitely get down in the comments let us know if you're planning on going there or if you've been there and maybe what some of your experiences are or have been make sure you guys stick around though we have something really big coming up like our next video is going to be kind of a big one I personally am very excited <laughs> for what we have coming up like very excited it's gonna be epic guys make sure you subscribe you're not gonna want to miss the next three weeks of epicness that we have coming. It's gonna be huge and we cannot wait to share it with you. So until then, we'll see you next time.